Hi friends, Mickey Mankus here and welcome to Out the Back Door. Today I am going to show you how I steam my berries into a beautiful juice. I've had quite a few of you reaching out to me asking how exactly do I steam my berries to get this juice and I said well all right I'll do a video on it I have been doing blueberry juice I've done choke cherry juice so I've been busy doing that and I still have more berries to do I have honey berries that I pulled out of the freezer because I need the freezer space I've also got a bunch of blueberries yet that I've picked out of our patch and I'm gonna get those all juiced up this is actually a steamer juicer, or juicer steamer, yeah. Well anyway, in the bottom, as you can see in the picture, I've got it filled full of water. And I've got them sitting out on my Camp Chef uh, cook stoves right now outdoors because it's the first of September, and guess what? It is like 87 degrees out. Now this is our August weather, and we're just rolling into September now, and August was really cool, so I'm canning outside yet. All right, so the bottom holds the water. This is what's gonna be boiling and causing the steam to go up through this chamber right here. This is where the juice is gonna be collected into. Okay, and the very top here, all right, we have like a strainer in there and that's where we're going to be pouring our berries into. So I'm gonna start with some honey berries and it's a simple process. All you do is dump them in And you're going to put your cover on okay as the steam is building up and comes through the chamber here there's an opening in here it's going to be steaming the berries which is heating them up and it's going to be bursting them so all their natural juices are coming down into this reservoir here this is where we've got a hose that comes down and that's where your juice is going to be draining out there is an overfill um, hole in the center here actually that's where the steam is coming up through and if you have your hose blocked off your juice is going to continually build up and it's going to overflow back into your water reservoir and you're wasting your juice i've got my hose down into um, a dutch oven here i tried doing this once before with i believe it was a ball one gallon decorative jar and i thought well that'll work and had the juice going into there and those jars are not made for high temperature. It was about half full of juice and all of a sudden, crack, the thing shattered and I lost, well, half a gallon of juice at least that I was doing. Plus I had a big mess to clean up. So I learned my lesson. I always use a Dutch oven now or something more substantial that'll hold up to the heat of the juice that's coming out and then I'll collect it in there. This is a simple process. Now I'm gonna be able to walk away and go start on my other project for juicing. So what I'm gonna be doing while the berries are juicing, because it's gonna take them a while so I can work on other things, I'm gonna get my crab apples ready to juice also. But I'm gonna do this in a different way. So I'm gonna be able to show you two different ways that I actually make juice. Now, some people were suggesting making wine out of the juice. Yes, you could do that, but I haven't had any alcohol in over 41 years, so I'm just making regular juice for us to drink. And if by chance the grandchildren or anybody else comes over and they don't want an, you know, an alcoholic beverage, I've got some delicious homemade juice for them. These beautiful crab apples. My sister said, come over and pick from the tree. And so by the time I got there, she had already had two big bags picked for me. And so we finished picking a little bit more and I said, okay, that's enough now. So anyway, what I'm gonna do um, with the apples, I've already washed these because like I said last night, I was washing up a bunch and I was getting them all prepared. I've got a bucket of water right here. I've got my big bowl that I'm gonna start tossing all my washed apples into. And I've got three bags. Well, this is a partial bag, but the bags are full of crab apples. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just more or less rinsing them really well. And while I'm sitting here, I'm gonna try to pull off most of the stems. If I miss a few, that's okay. Because they're gonna go into a big pot and this is how I'm gonna cook these down in order to make the juice. I had to come and check on this. Um, can't just ignore it. 
the juice has been coming down into my pot here and I'm gonna double check to see how the berries are doing because once they cook down quite a bit I'm gonna take another container of berries and dump them in there and I just keep doing this and I end up with a, a big mash by the time I get done and some people have asked, well, what can you do with that then? Can I make like fruit leathers or whatever? To me, there's not gonna be a whole lot of flavor left in the mash that's in here um, because we're draining most of the flavor out in the juice. If you wanna to try to dehydrate it or something and make a powder with it, go ahead, try. I don't know, I have not done it. I just feed it to the critters, but I wanna see what kind of a level we're at right now. Okay, they still have quite a ways to go um, while I'm working on the apples. Another thing that you have to double check is make sure that you don't run your bottom reservoir of water dry. You need to keep an eye on that. Um, I've caught it where it was almost dry, and that's why I always have a couple of jugs of water out here just, you know, to have on hand so I can top it off and continue the process. Let me see if I can take a quick peek in here. Okay. I've still probably got about three quarters full of water because I did fill it towards the top when I first started it. All right, there's usually a clamp to this to clamp this off so it doesn't run and I don't know what I did with it. So I make do with what I have. The reason I'm doing this right now yeah, almost looks like a blood transfusion. Is I'm pretty sure I need to add water to the bottom there before I burn it out. So I'm just going to lift this. Oh, I guess not, but that's okay. It's about, let's see. It was about a third full. All right, that's topping it off, and I'm going to get this back on here. As you can see, I kind of tilted it some. This is full of juice, and I want to get back into... There we go. Now, this juice is extremely hot. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda dump some of the excess juice down in here and then I'm gonna start loading the hopper again with more fruit. That should be good for now. That's another thing you're gonna have to watch is the container that you're putting your juice into, make sure it doesn't overflow. I do have a larger stock pot in the garage right now. I'm gonna bring that out. I'll empty this in, yes, I'll have to clamp off the hose again, and then I'll empty that into the larger stock pot, and I'll just keep doing that until I'm all done with this process. I'm not going to have time to can it tonight. Um, I'm going to be working on the apples, the apple juice also, and so tomorrow I'll most likely be canning this up. I'll put this into plastic containers that I have or whatever, or bottles, once it cools down so I don't break anything or melt anything. And then I'll put it into the refrigerator. I'll heat it up tomorrow morning and then start the canning process. That's when I'm going to go and take uh, my All-American 941 out because perfect timing for it. Um, I'll have enough jars to fill it up and I'm water bath canning, but I'm going to use my pressure canner as a steam canner. Um, if you don't know how to do that and you're interested, I'll leave a link above in the corner here to when I steam canned my orange juice. Simple, simple process and you use so minimal amount of water in comparison to water bath canning and how many loads that you have to do because I'm gonna be double stacking in my All American. I think I bunny trailed earlier. I was talking about um, the leftover mash in here and what you might be able to do with it. Um, Actually, I'm just going to feed it to the critters and yeah, they're gonna get a treat out of it. So this almost looks like shriveled up 
raisins. Um, yeah, that was the honey berries. And now I am going to be dumping blueberries on top of it. I am doing a mixture of this. I do have one more container, one gallon of the blueberries. But what I'm going to do with that, there we go. I'm gonna save that. Um, I've been making blueberry buckle. And I think Mr. Manka said he wanted a blueberry pie. So I may do that this evening or early tomorrow morning um, once the temperature starts going down. So it would either be late tonight or super early in the morning. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for the temperature to come back up for the water to be boiling to cause the steam in order to do this, which will give me adequate time to give back to those apples. I ended up turning off the burner just a short bit ago. Um, all of the berries have cooked down. I will continue draining everything into this pot and then I'm going to put it in the large stock pot to let it cool down closer to room temperature before I go and put it into containers to put in the refrigerator. It's getting late this evening so I'm going to call it quits for tonight and get cleaned up. Uh, my neighbors stopped by for a visit and yeah, I don't, I don't think we ever have a short visit. So it was really good to see them. And that's why it's kind of like time to call it quits for the night. So until tomorrow morning, I'll see you then. Good afternoon. I know I said I was going to be here in the morning to get going on this, but I had a ton of chores that I had to get going. A lot of laundry out on the line and everything else. So I have gotten all of my apples cleaned last night took quite a while um, and what I'm doing yeah I had Mr. Mankus light up the burner for me right away and I didn't have water in the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'll probably fill up both of these again and dump them in here I want to bring the water level up to just under the top of the layer of, how can I say that? Almost to the top of the apples. And then that way I'm gonna slowly simmer these and cook them down. And then I'll be extracting my juice from there. Now I'm gonna have a lot of mash in here afterwards. I don't know if you want to take the time to run it through a mill um, being that these are so small, you're not going to be able to just make an applesauce out of them immediately. But like I said, if you put them through a mill, you should be able to. There'd be some flavor left over. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not. I'll decide later on because I've got so much going on right now. Otherwise, the deer love the mash. I put piles out and they just, they munch it all down. So anyway. Okay, so while those are cooking down, um, I've got the heat underneath my pressure canner. I've also got all of my blueberry juice warming up right now so that I can start canning it up. Um, the reason I've got my pressure canner out and that I'm warming it up is I'm gonna be steam canning so I don't have to use so much water. I'm using my All American 921. I can only fit 19 pints into this. The reason I didn't pull my 941 out is because it doesn't set on top of here well enough. That's why I've got the single burner. Um, I would use my big canner on that, but being I've got the stock pot on it right now, I'm gonna opt for using my smaller one. I will get probably two batches done today, but that's what I'm gonna be doing with it. One thing about the blueberry juice is when we steamed it, the juice came out 100% juice. We didn't have it diluted at all. There wasn't any water added. And that is the way I'm going to be canning it. I'm not adding any sugar either. So once I do open up a jar of this, if I decide I want sweetener, I can add the sweetener to it at that time. And I can also add another pint of water to the pint of the juice to dilute it down so it's not so strong, so intense. Right now, the juice is extremely thick and that's the way that I wanted it. I can use this later on and make a blueberry jelly. Now, also canning it up and everything, everybody was uh, recommending um, blueberry wine, that type of thing. I think I mentioned that already. 
I don't know if you can still make a blueberry wine after you've canned the juice or not. I'm not sure, but I don't think I'm planning on doing that anyway. So that's what I'm working on right now while those apples are still cooking down. They're getting close to the point where I would start pulling out some of the juice and straining. So once I get to that point, I'll show you how I'm doing that. What I'm gonna be using today are the four jars canning lids um, in order to do the juice. I do recommend these. Um, I like them better myself than Ball and Kerr. Yes, I am an affiliate of four jars canning lids, but it's because I believe in their product. But anyway, so um, I am gonna use the four jar canning lids today. Also, um, I will leave a link in the description box. I'll also leave um, a code, Backdoor10, that you can receive 10% off if you do place an order. So anyway, I am going to get ready to start jarring up all of my juice and get it into the canner. I've got the first load of the blueberry juice in here. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be steam canning. For steam canning, all I'm doing is using a small amount of water in my pressure canner. The reasoning for this is anything that you want a water bath can, you can steam can. You don't have to fill the water all the way to the top and bury, uh, submerge your jars in the water or anything. I've got double layer in here. Can you imagine the amount of water to have to put in there and how long it's gonna take to heat up? So when I normally can, pressure can, I put two inches of water into my All-American canner to begin with. Read your manual so you know exactly how much water you're supposed to put in. And then I put my jars in. I do have a line in there, um, watermark, I would probably say, from using it so many times. So I know how much water to dump in there right away without even measuring it. Anyway, I've got another rack in between so I can double layer my jars. And what I'm doing is I've got it sealed down. Now, I've got the temperature raised up a bit because my, my juice was hot and everything and the canner was hot when I put the jars into it. I'm gonna wait until I start getting a stream of steam as if we were going to vent when we're pressure canning. Um, once it starts really venting well, I'm gonna start my timer the same as if I was water bath canning. Now for these pints of juice in here, I am gonna do this for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna allow this to vent for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna turn my heat off and I'm, I'm done. I'll let the residual steam come out of there so I don't burn myself when I start removing the, um, the lid. And then I'm gonna take my jars out. Now I did leave approximately a three quarter inch head space in my jars. Um, I just found that that works the best for me. So anyway, I am going to let this come up to temp. Once it starts venting really well, I'll time it for 15 minutes and then I'll be done. So I still have juice in my uh, stock pot here that's hot. Um, I'm gonna go out and get more jars and everything and I will get a second load ready to go in. Okay, the way that I'm gonna do my apple juice now is um, I've got a stock pot sitting here. Um, I've got a food mill, except I, I'm not gonna use the actual mill. I just want it to drain through there. Um, I've got a jelly cloth here, just kind of a makeshift one that I've made. And I always get mine wet ahead of time because then that way it seems like the juice goes through it a lot faster. Um, I am just going to start gently scooping my juice. All right, it's a beautiful red color. We're gonna have gorgeous red juice out of this one. And I'm just gonna continue doing this. Now, I try not to mash the apples down any more than necessary because I don't want um, a cloudy juice. You'd be able to use this um, for apple jelly right away. I am not going to add any additional water to this. So once I get this all strained out and everything, then I will have the chance to taste it to see how much sweetener I wanna add to it. Once I have my sweetener added in, then I'll go ahead and can it up the exact same way that I did the blueberry juice. Right now, um, I think the timer's just about done on the blueberry juice, uh, steam canning it. That is how I make my juice, whether I'm using my 
juice steamer or if I'm putting water in with my fruit and cooking it down that way in order to make juice. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you for joining me today. And if you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And please give me a thumbs up, share the video. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Man eating apple tree, stop!